This episode of the Damage Guild podcast is sponsored by listeners like you. Join the guild at patreon.com slash damage guild to receive exclusive perks, member rewards, and bonus content. Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. Do we go down a floor or do we go up a floor? We definitely go down a floor because that is the other likely place that the throne would be. If I were carrying a giant throne, I would rather carry it down a flight of stairs than up one. You take another couple of steps forward and see two spiky-tongued beasts. Elindria hits all three times yet again and brings it down with a final stab through its armored back. The stairs end and you see the wall shift from carved stone to natural cavern, the red light emanating from somewhere farther ahead. The heat begins to increase. Some shambling, rotten figures turn towards you. Something about them seems different. They're lava zombies. They're oozing this red goo from some of their open wounds. Called it. Oh, they actually are lava zombies. And they begin to shamble towards you. Uh... Initiative. Ah, initiative. Yes. Roll for initiative. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da. <laughs> I don't know why you associate that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's in the same meter, the same uh, rhythm. Roll for initiative. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. <laughs> Only kind of. No, it's literally the same. Uh, that would be an 18. Or the old Aslo Tendertoe. Shelva's going to go on a 20. non natto. Tokus is looking at a 7. Uh, Respectable 7. Shaba, you're first. I will. I will knock an arrow to my bow and let fly at the nearest Zombrone. Okay. I don't know. Do you have line of sight? Um, if not, I will get it first. I will get. I will obtain line of sight. There's like this cavern wall that might be in your way, Shaba. Yeah, you need to move up a little bit more. Yeah, Shaba, could you run out to the store and grab me some line of sight, please? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead a and nice uh, fresh can of line of sight. <laughs> I'm gonna crack open a nice cold can of <laughs> line of sight and drain that bad boy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move up a little to the side. I'm gonna take a diagonal strafing motion, and I'm going to target the zombie that's nearest the right-hand wall. And the first roll to hit is a 25, and the second is a 13. Have those both hit. All right. First one is going to deal minimum damage. That's five. And then the second one, since the zombie has now been demolished, will be, oh, almost max, uh, 19. Pretty big spread. Yeah. And that shall end my turn. So it takes two solid arrow shots, and as it does, you see little splashes of this red substance that fly out from it Ooh. land on the ground behind Guys, who who's feeling some melee right now? Not I. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds sounds tasty. Unfortunately, because most of our party is melee-oriented. <laughs> yeah. Aslo? I will. I'll take a page out of Shaba's book and move up. Say 25 feet. Well, if you're going to truly take a page, you would diagonally strafe 25 feet. Oh, yes. I strafe diagonally 25 feet. <laughs> and then I would like to dish up a little Eldritch Blast. Um, Shaba, you shot the zombie on the left, right? I did. No, I shot okay. the one on the right. I shot the one on the right. I shoot the one on the right. Well, if you're dishing up Eldritch Blasts, I'll have mine with a side of hot sauce. All right. Let's see here. Hmm, that's a two on the die, which is the worst I can possibly roll. <laughs> Unless a 12 hits. I see what you did there. Just a subtle humble brag about being a halfling. <laughs> I get it. It was an unintentional subtle humble brag. <laughs> you have a plus 10? I believe so. That is a hit. Wow. That's what Shaba just hit with, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, charisma plus six, and then uh, initiative bo- or, um, proficiency bonus plus four. Yep. Sheesh. All right. So, I, dude, so I literally can't miss these guys. <laughs> if I roll a one, then I re-roll it. Sweet. <laughs> All right. I will continue to do Eldritch Blast. <laughs> that, was, that was super juicy. It's going to be three. Three damage. Three force damage. So. All right. At least I hit. Something. Yep. Something. It is something. Um, 
you rolled two dice for that? I sure did. <laughs> you know, one and two. <laughs> two d10s, mm, okay. one and two. Um, <clears throat> did we uh, short? Did we short rest last Heck time? Heck yeah, we did. Yes. We did. Okay. So I should have my bardic inspirations back. <laughs> but who are we kidding? You always short rest. As a, get it? <laughs> <laughs> we did do a combat and then a smaller combat. Hey, Tokus, even when you long rest, you're still short. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just, I actually listened to uh, the episodes, Jay. I'm trying to think if he used any bardics. He went back up after the last combat to rest, didn't you? Oh, we did, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, I have myself at full HP. Yep, I'm at nearly full HP. Okay, that makes sense. I'm at almost full, yeah. It says you're barely injured here, so everyone make sure your hit points are correct. Yeah, mine are correct. Uh, I will update mine. Um, well, let's see. For my bonus action, then I will uh, give Tokus some bardic inspiration. Aw, thanks, bro. Tokus, if at first you don't succeed, don't try skydiving. <laughs> du- duly noted. <laughs> All right, that ends my turn. All right. The uninjured zombie begins its shamble towards you. Mm, these zombies always be shambling. Hmm. So much of that shambolicness. It's not moving particularly quickly, but it closes about half the distance. I don't think shambling is used to describe like anything else in fantasy lore besides like zombies. There's a classic monster in D&D called the Shambling Mound. Shambling Mound, yeah, yeah. It's a plant creature. Yeah, but even the Shambling Mound doesn't shamble. You know what I mean? It just kind of kind of squishes a little bit. Mm, it's true. Only zombies shamble. Mm. All right. Captain Clapton... He does not have a ranged attack. Oh no, Captain! Watch out for that lava! He takes the throw peg leg option. <laughs> action, excuse me. He just pulls his peg leg off, presses a button, and like fletching shoots out the back, and a spike shoots out the front, and he just throws <laughs> it like a dart. Or he lifts up his leg and presses a button, and the, it just fires off the end of his leg. That would be even better. <laughs> Aslo, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you toss him your... Uh, Wait, Tokus, your, uh, you should invent that. For, for Captain Cotton? That would be pretty sweet. A peg leg catapult. I was going to say, what if, you, what if you lent <laughs> him your uh, hand crossbow, Aslo? Oh, that's true. I could. I don't really use that much anymore these days. He runs about halfway up and then readies his attack in case anyone gets close. And Elindria is going to do the same thing, actually. She runs up beside him to support. Nice to have a front line in our way. Am I right, Aslo? Ah, oh, so true. <laughs> Took us. I don't know if I can do what I wanted to do this turn. I would just go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so diagonal <laughs> movement counts as more than five feet, right? Uh, if you move two diagonal spaces, then it counts as 15. I was going to say something to Alundria, but I know I'm not really supposed to be able to say that. What aren't you supposed to be able to say? Just speak from the heart. Yeah, tell her your true feelings, Tokus. Okay. Well, no, I was, I was going to see if she would, she would hold up for me or... I had something up my sleeve, but... It was for Lendria. You can get next to her. Oh, if I run through Shaba. Shaba, do you mind if I run through you? Um, let me arch my legs like a bridge and we can play a fun little game where you go through, like, you know, like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, like I'll reach up, like, for Uppy, and then you'll grab my arms and you'll, like, throw me under your legs. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do that. It's like when my kids are riding their bikes around the kitchen uh, and I'm, like, making lunch or whatever, I just, like, do the under the bridge thing. Well, we'll do that here, except in a weird D and D environment with adults and <laughs> Goliaths, and, and only in our imaginations. <laughs> yep, right. yep. And uh, mm-hmm. I am going to reach into my pack, and I'm going to pull out something that we've all forgotten about, myself included, probably at some point. And I would like to touch a willing creature, Alendria. Hopefully, you're willing, and I want to protect you from a certain type of creatures. Ooh! I'd like to use. A scroll of protection of good and evil, and choose undead. Oh. Nice. That's wow. a that's a sweet play, there, Tokus. We found that scroll in the dragon sword. Ah, oh. it's actually specifically a scroll of protection from undead. Wow. Oh. Okay. Even better. No better time than now. Let us cast a spell. And I, I can cast it from this scroll, right? Because it's Cleric, Paladin, Warlock, Wizard, and I'm... You are a wizard. It's, it's a scroll of protection, and anyone can use this. Oh, man. Well, I'm a weird, bad wizard, and I will use this scroll on you, Alendria. Don't get hurt. This will make you get hurt less. Okay, so how a scroll of protection works, it doesn't cast a spell. 
Using an action to read the scroll encloses you in an invisible barrier that extends from you to form a 5 foot radius, 10 foot high cylinder. So everyone around you is in this protection. Okay, so this is different from... I'm sorry, I pulled the verbiage of scroll of protection from good and evil. This is, you said specifically, a scroll of undead protection. Yes. And I have to be the one to read it. I can't hand it to her, and, or I can't cast it on her. Right, whoever reads it gets it. So for five minutes, the barrier prevents creatures of the specified type, the undead, from entering or affecting anything within the cylinder. It moves with you and remains centered on you... But if you move such that an undead will be inside the cylinder, the effect ends. Wow. So they can make a charisma check to try to overcome it. I guess I misunderstood what the item was. Maybe I should just hand it off to Shaba or Aslo, like somebody who would want to have that kind of a barrier, because I, I don't need that barrier. I do want to get up and close to the zombies. That's true, but if we if we keep a formation like this where we're all pretty close together, then it doesn't, doesn't matter as much who reads it. Okay. From a turn sequencing standpoint, it would be efficient for me to just read it, I suppose. And we just stay tight? Yeah, I think so. I think, could I read it and mention something to my party members and say, Stay close! I have this scroll! Yeah, you can do that. Should protect us a little bit, and I end my turn. So, can you not attack out of the cylinder? You can attack out of it, but you can't... If you move into one of the zombies or next to one of the zombies, then it'll end the spell. Oh, really? Yeah, I feel like that would be really weak on Tokus because I don't. Mu- I kind of want to get into melee, so I feel like I should hand it off. So by virtue of you moving toward the zombie to be next to it, the cylinder passes through the zombie because it's round and thus ends the effect? Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Okay. So it's not a, like, put up this barrier and then I can just, like, sit there and attack. It's like if you're getting surrounded by a horde of undead, you put up this barrier and then they can't get to you. Yeah. Right. I mean, I have ranged attacks. I suppose we could just leave it on me, but I feel like it might be more effective on one of you two since you're ranged combatants. I can move faster than zombies. I'm not super scared. Plus, I have you and two other brave melee combatants in front of me, so I'm extra not scared. Meat shields. Melee combatants. I'm like extra not scared right now. I just want you to know that. I mean, between the two of you, Brian, although has less health, he has the less superior defenses. I I actually think I should just instead fire a ranged attack here and hand the scroll off to you, Shaba. I think you'd benefit more from the scroll. Well, I think when the cult inevitably unleashes the hordes of zombies that are out in the, the caldera, on us, then maybe this scroll will come in handier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how about I just don't read the scroll, but I still want to hand it off to one of you guys because I, I learning that it does not work very well with a melee combatant like me. Uh-huh. I, which one of you wants the scroll? I mean, I'll take it. <sighs> if it's free. I'm not going to pay my hard-earned gold for it or anything, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I think better of reading the scroll, and I hand the scroll to Shaba. Hmm. Well, thank you. I'm going to shoot the nearby zombie, although I'm, I'm concerned this isn't actually going to deal any damage because <laughs> it's a fire vial. But let's do it. Uh, 24 to hit. It hits. But it's fire damage. Maybe it heals it. Let's find out. It still seems to hurt it somehow. So. Perfect. All right. I'll end my turn. Okay. Now the more injured zombie advances. It can't quite fully close the distance, but it's almost to Captain Clapton and Alindria. Shabba? Uh, I'm going to shoot the, uh, the closer guy. I'll go ahead and uh, move out a little bit away from the party and take my shots. First one's a 24 to hit, and the second one is a 14. You know, I just had this sickening thought. I wonder if they explode. Uh, I would wager that that is a strong possibility. Tokus, that is sickening. I can't believe you would say that. <laughs> I know. I, I, I can't believe it came out of my mouth, but there it is. <laughs> hey, Shiloh, maybe I, maybe I will take that scroll of protection undead after all. Oh, you want it? I mean, if they explode, yeah. Okay, I'll have to spend a bonus action to give it to you then, I guess. No, no, I'm kidding. You, oh, you okay. keep it. Okay. <laughs> so the first attack deals 13 damage, and the second one is 9. 
and I'm just going to take one little tiny s more step backwards. And I'll look down the uh, tunnel behind me to make sure there's no zombies sneaking up on me. Yeah, as you're backing away from them, you're approaching the tunnel leading farther into the caves. And down there, you don't see anything moving except for some hazy smoke or steam in the distance. Ooh. It's dark and difficult to make out any details, though. Ominous. Okay. Is there a source of light down here other than uh, my light spell? You have a light spell, and there's just kind of this dim red glow that's reflecting off of the walls. That's right. But it's not enough to clearly light things. Were you thinking about his armor, Ryan? Nope. I was just thinking about light and how far we could actually see. Ah, I see. It's Aslo's turn. Indeed it is. I will fire off another Eldritch Blast at the zombie that is closest, the one that's closing in on Clapton and Elendria. Yes, to explode the magma blood onto them. Well, that's a natural one, so <laughs> let me re-roll that. Wow. <laughs> so if you roll another one, you do miss. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's, it's anything other than a one, so I hit. Um... And that would be four damage on that Zamboni. This is the higher level Eldritch, right, where it gets multiple rays and everything, and it, you only did four? Mm-hmm. That's that's 2d10 force damage both times. Three and four. Yep. Oh, pretty <sighs> spicy. You need some new d10s. I need to become a warlock. That's what I need. Hmm. Can you do anything else? Um, can I rewrite my entire character to be a warlock now instead of a bard? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Um... Uh, yes, I'll give Bardic Inspiration to Shaba. All right. Shaba, I've got <clears throat> some words of wisdom for you. Oh, okay. All right. I'm ready. Hold on. Hold on. Nope. Okay, now I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. I look over at Shaba and I say, just because we accept you as you are doesn't mean we've abandoned hope that you'll improve. <laughs> <laughs> well, as my employer, I hope you know that I'm always striving to improve. Uh, based on your performance over the last uh, <laughs> six months, uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, it's only getting worse. <laughs> I, don't know. I just had to do my employee performance review. Uh, <laughs> those are terrible. Mm -hmm. Did you have to rate yourself? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you going to move? Oh, um, yeah, I'm going to move behind the melee fighters. All right, I'm done. All right. The less injured zombie gets right up thanks to Captain Clapton and Alindria, and both of them get to make their free attacks. Both attacks hit Captain Clapton just barely, but Alindria gets a strong hit. Now that they're up close, you can see them a little bit more clearly, and the goo that's on them is not lava. doesn't appear to be, and you don't feel heat radiating from them or anything. You're not sure exactly what it is, but there's this red, viscous substance that's oozing out of them. Like, uh, like slime on Nickelodeon? Yeah, something like that. Ooh. Slime time, you guys. They're slime zombies. And Elindria's fire sword seems normally effective. Like normally fire effective or abnormally less effective? Oh, norm normal effectiveness. Yeah, normal effectiveness. Okay. <laughs> it's somewhat effective. <laughs> and then zombie attacks. Wait, are we just assuming that it's lava blood? Maybe it's just red, guys. Like, maybe they just have a weird blood. Dude, I'll bet you they've cultured the same blood that they use to make the blood oozes, and they've infused it into the zombies to create these mm. mutated monstrosities. Yeah, so it's not that they're resistant to fire, it's that they might be resistant to necrotic stuff, or even healed by it. Yeah, they're like zombie ooze creatures that are, like, controlled. They, they're, like, possessed by the ooze. Like Ninja Turtles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's how Ninja Turtles work, right? <laughs> they were possessed the whole time. Yeah. So the zombie reaches out and strikes Captain Clapton twice. Captain! Captain! No! Captain staggers back painfully, but says, I I'm alright. Does he get oozed? Are there visible signs of ooze on his person? Some of them, like, Splash onto him as he, as the zombie reaches out and swings, Ew. but it's drops of slime on his arm and stuff. This is why I don't do melee combat, you guys. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> it's pretty messy. Gross. It slimed me. Ew. Yeah. This is why I don't do zombies. 
also. <laughs> Guys, I- I'm gonna have to sit this one out. I just, <laughs> I can. I'm so disgusted. I cannot. I just Feeling can't. a little bit queasy right now. <laughs> yeah. Tummy's turning. I'm just gonna sit this one out. <laughs> gonna go ahead and throw up in the corner and, uh, and sit this one out. <laughs> All right. Captain Clapton retaliates with two sword slashes and hits with both. Nice. So both zombies are looking pretty torn up at this point. The one that hit Captain Clapton, some of the cuts that it had in it began to close up as he was attacking. No. Mm. What? Mm. You're not allowed to do that, Thane. They have life-stealing attacks. It's against the rules. It's the... Yep, it's, they're vampiric. Would it be possible for Captain Clapton to wield a giant hammer so we could call him Captain Crunch? <laughs> <laughs> He's not experienced in the hammer. Oh, man. Just give him the uh, cacophonous cowboy pl- cleats. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just click these together, Cal- Clapton, <laughs> and say that there's no place like there's him. There's no place like <laughs> him. <laughs> wow. Elindria makes three attacks against the zombie, and I roll the one, a two, and a two. Oof. And she misses on all three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> Wait a second. No, she has just enough. I was looking at the wrong stat block. She has just enough to hit with the twos. Okay, I was about to say. Twos hit? Wow. (laughs) I was about to say, because I rolled a three at one point, I think, and that still hit, so she's got to be at least as proficient as I am with her weapons. So she gets two hits, one away from max damage, three dice. Zombies usually aren't hard to hit. They're just hard to befriend. Mm. So yeah, she deals extreme fire damage. Yes. And... Burns the zombie down. Zombie collapses, but then you see as it falls, all of the slime starts to pour out of its wounds. Oh uh, no. Oh no. Everyone stand on your tippy toes. Quick, everyone put your ballet shoes on. Or your galoshes. <laughs> In place of the zombie now, or climbing out on top of it, you see a moving red slime. Oh no. Ew. Oh. Gross. Lindria follows up and attacks that one and hits that with her second attack instead. Next, it's Tokus' turn. Oh, man. Okay, so if I finish off the other zombie, we're fighting a second ooze. Yeah. Just don't know what to do, guys. I would just work on the ooze. That's what I'm going to do. Well, if the zombies heal themselves when they hit us, then I would finish off the zombie. Yeah, the ooze might Mm. have the same thing. That's true. It might, but we don't know for sure yet. Yeah. It's hard to tell if an ooze is, like, becoming less oozy as it attacks, you know what I mean? Hmm, that's true. All right, well, I'm going to attack the zomb. Do you run up next to it? Yeah, I do. Zombrone. Um, 15 to hit. Hits. Okay. I think all of you can probably hit with a two with this fight. <laughs> <laughs> We're just that good. All right, so that is 12 physical and two poison on top. Sorry, 13 physical, and it's magical physical. 13 is enough to bring the zombie down. It collapses and follows in the same pattern as the other one, oozing out slime. Yep. All right, so uh, I did plan to war magic this turn, so instead of attacking again with the axe, I... I wonder if my lightning lure wouldn't be able to... I was thinking of pulling the ooze, the one that's next to Clapton, next to me, but I don't know how well a lightning lure is going to pull an ooze. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, rules are around pulling something that doesn't have a... What do you call that when it doesn't have, like, a body, per se? Feet? I'm, I'm just going to slice at the ooze that just came out. Yeah, slice it up. Ooh, roll to four. It's still going to hit. It's, it's still going to hit? Okay. Wow, these things are just really that easy to hit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be seven magical physical and five poison. Is it weird to call it magical physical? You you understand it's coming from a magic weapon. I should just say physical. Or you should just say magical. That's my turn. That didn't hurt it much at all, did it? Like, from what I can tell, it still looks very oozy. I bet it's the poison in my axe that it doesn't care about. You slash into it, and it just kind of forms up around your weapon as you hit it. What? It looks like the poison mm-hmm. on the axe is affecting it. However, the axe itself is useless. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yep. yikes. Even the magical axe 
Yes. I should have war magic and done a green flame axe. Dude. Because maybe the fire would have been effective. So the axe, even the magical axe damage is not effective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, that did, I didn't think of it at the time. That's my turn. All right. And the slime now tries to attack you. That's not a very good roll. And you have really good armor class. So it reaches out one of its little pseudopods and swings at you. But you pull back out of the way. And Shaba. Don't even touch me. Uh, refresh me on the rules, Thane, for fire damage clubs. <laughs> well, the official rule is that torches do one point of fire damage. Right. But we were doing, what, D6? <laughs> I think I said it was a D6, yeah. Okay. Guys, is it worth me fire damage clubbing? Because I don't think my arrows are going to do anything. It's either that or I line up a lightning shot, but that would get uh, Captain in the uh, crossfire there. You might be able to strafe over and just get them, right? You get one of them. I get one, yeah. Or I just take up a support roll and start, like, casting healing spells and stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think I think we don't want to waste our resources. I don't know. I'm concerned. We haven't figured out if the oozes are healing. I mean, maybe they are because the zombies were self-healing. So I, I get your urgency to, like, A, I'm probably doing something really bad. I started splitting damage. Like, I started attacking the ooze that they hadn't attacked. So you don't want to split damage when it comes to a potentially self-healing enemy. I just did that. So yeah, we should we should focus on one ooze. Yeah. And it's okay. It still dealt damage. It just wasn't much. Should I just take a... Te- I mean, I feel like a test shot isn't even worth it because we almost know that it's not going to do anything, right? Yeah. What other options do you have? Do you have any uh, spells? Any spell slots left? I'm scouring my... I mean, like I said, like su- taking up a support role and casting like a healing spirit to start pumping people up with some extra hit points would be about, I feel like, the most effective thing I could do besides, you know, rolling up with a fire damage club in hand. I don't hate the idea of getting your torch out. Like, if that's what you're going to be doing eventually, like, literally because it might actually be more effective than your bow. But we don't know. Like, here's the thing. is like, it's not like my magical axe did nothing. My guess would be it's like half or being reduced by a certain amount. So I actually I actually think your magical bow would still hurt them, just not for much. But hmm. I, I do think that uh, starting to heal Captain Clapton, like every turn as a free action, seems great. Yeah, okay. And you can use the bardic from Brian to enhance your heal. Well, if you think my bow will do some damage, then it's worth still attacking because I have ways to boost my damage output. So why don't I just do it, take a test shot? Yeah, yeah, and true. And see, see what happens. True. All right, I'm going to shoot the ooze that's closest to Tokus. That's going to be a 12 to hit on the first one. Hit. Oh, wait, are we still splitting our damage? Oh, well, they're both just barely injured, so... Yeah, they're both about the same, but okay. maybe... It, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the second one is a 21 to hit. Both hit. Okay. That's actually... I'm thinking about it. I wonder... I wonder if that's like a wombo combo that we've never explored before. You giving Jay Bardic and then him converting that into healing potential. Mm, that is pretty sweet. How could I do that? I can add a Bardic onto my healing spirit dice? Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, so damage spells or healing spells. They updated Bard uh, in the middle of our campaign. Oh, interesting. When that update happened, they gave it to all Bards, not just a specific type of Bard. And, uh, yeah, we can use Bardic as either enhancing a damage, a magical damage spell, or a healing spell. Wow. Okay. And I think that would work. How would that work with healing spirit? Would it only, like, work on one charge of the spirit, or is it the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. You'd use it up. Yeah, it would just be one die still, I would imagine. All right, so the first arrow did seven, and the second arrow dealt ten. Okay. So can I tell if any damage at all is being done, or does it just look like it's absorbing them? It seems effective. You can see chunks of the slime being blown back as your arrows strike into it. Yeah. Huh. All right. Fair enough. Well, even if it's a reduced damage amount, then, like, you know, I can Hunter's Mark and do it that way. But if it looks like somebody, like, Captain is getting too injured, I can also just Healing Spirit instead. Matter of fact, I might do that first. Although I'm running very low on spell slots. 
come to think. So maybe it's slashing weapons are what's not effective against it? Ah, uh, could be. Could yeah, be. it could be my axe specifically. I was going to say, we need to, like, relay to the team here what we're thinking about. Yeah. Like, somebody needs to communicate that we should focus one ooze and not do what I did. I'm sure a Lendrio sword is fine because it's fire. Got fire damage, but... Um is there anything Captain Clapton could do? Tokus, can you lend him your hammer? He's using... Uh, his, He's using a magical... It is slashing. It's not a rapier, it's a saber. Oh, no. <laughs> do you still have your rapier that you could toss him? Because that's piercing. But it wouldn't be magical, though. Yeah, don't know that it matters. Yeah. Um, then you said my bow still counts as a magical weapon, even though it's not like a plus one weapon, per se, right? Because it has right. magical effects. Okay. Everyone's wielding magic weapons. Okay. All right, um, that is it for me. Okay, Aslo? Aslo's going to fire off the old Eldritch Blast at one uh, closest to Tokus. That's a more than a 12 to hit, and that's 11 damage. Ooh. Not that it really matters with these things, but aren't you supposed to make an attack roll for each beam? Oh, am I? Let's see. Uh, yes, I think you're right. I mean, the odds of it actually missing are basically zero but yeah i think you're right yeah make a separate attack roll for each of them so each die represents a separate beam of the blast each d20 yeah uh, he would have to roll double one right yeah since he's halfling and you said two's hit so the, the lowest i got was a 13 to hit so what was your damage uh 11 just something to keep in mind particularly if you want to use it later on yes yeah good call it's things that aren't so easy to hit all right that's me first one attacks captain clapton again first time in slime form and that's a hit so it strikes captain clapton and then attempts to overwhelm and move into his space to engulf him oh no oh crap but captain manages to shake it off and pull out in time they can do other things guys oh no not other things other things no captain's turn man maybe he shouldn't be fighting these things Mm. you were all talking about it not using slashing weapons so he doesn't have any other option at the moment he is going to disengage he'll do dodge action maybe i can still draw their fire and just keep them from hurting anyone else Mm. that's awfully noble of you there captain i call this move the hop on the deck and flop like a fish (laughs) (laughs) yeah he starts to do the worm (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Elindria moves forward to attack the same one that Tokus is attacking And goes at it with her sword She strikes it three times for a lot However, one of the times that she strikes it The slime splits in half Oh, uh, sweet cripes Does it look like the same as the red slime that attacked us in our hotel room that one time? It does Seems okay. remarkably uh, similar. Look at that. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. This might be a stronger batch mm. of slime. Yeah. Fortunately, after the split, uh, Elindria's third strike was enough to take down the one that was left next to her. So you're still dealing with two. Are they physically smaller? They are. The ones that split off? Okay. They're each about half as big. All right. Tokus. The one that split off seems like it's relatively weak. There's, I mean, it's just a little piece of another one. Uh, I'm going to attack the one that's the little piece with my ox. Your ox. All right. Uh, shoot. One poison, six from the axe. Okay. I imagine that doesn't kill it. No. Okay. Um, war magic. I'm going to turn to the other ooze. I think green flame blade doesn't work like that. They have to be adjacent to each other. Yes, they do. Shoot. I don't want to just lay into this guy that's near death. Isn't somebody going to go after me? Aren't you about to go, Shaba? Uh, not directly after you, but I'm going to go soon. I'm going to, I'm going to lay into this other ooze with my green flame axe. Man, it's a lot of extra splash damage that I'm missing here because they're not adjacent. Unfortunate. Roll an eight on the die. Uh, that should hit, right, Dungeon Master? Yes. Okay, so we got poison. Unless you roll a one, you hit. Sweet. And then... All right, so four from the fire, 11 from the axe, and five poison. Right. It's too bad that it's not centered on your character, and then you can just, like, send the fire wherever you want to. It's like it, it's if the enemies are adjacent. Yeah. That's unfortunate. The second 
who is also split apart. Oh, they're splitting again. Okay. <laughs> Where will it go? We're kind of squeezed in tight here, listeners. Yep. Close quarters. Yeah, there's like a, a wall in the cavern, like Clapton, Alendria, and myself are all squeezed up against the oozes. Nice and cozy. So this one splits off farther back along the wall. And does that end your turn? Yeah. All right. So now the first one that split off attacks Tukus. No. And misses. And it's Shaba's turn. Shaba, you can attack separate targets now, right? I can, yes. So you could try to pick off the ooze I couldn't finish. Yeah. And still, like, get value out of your second attack? I have to make sure that I can get to a spot where I can get a clear shot at it, but then still move back over to try to shoot the other one. Or I can try to shoot the other one first. I don't think I can do both. Well, maybe... Let's see. Do I have a clear shot out on the the one that's in between Alindria and Captain? Alindria's kind of blocking your view there. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can do both of those on the same turn, but... How far out can you step? Could you, like, step wide and shoot the ones beyond me? Um, I don't think so. I was thinking about the one that's up to your left. That's the one that's most damaged. Yeah, let me go right beneath it. Can't you stagger your movement when you're a martial class and you start to get extra attack? Couldn't he, like, move forward, shoot, and then... Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, is that if even doing that, I don't think I can get get both of those the two most injured oozes in the same turn. Okay. So I'll just go and and try to hit the one that's um, closest to death. Actually, no, that... Because then if I kill it on my first attack, then what am I going to do with my second? You could shoot the other one that split off. I could still get it? Isn't Tokus in the way? Well, I'm kind of small, and if these are really big oozes, I don't know if I'd be causing... It's small, too, but I think you have a, a clearer shot on that one than you do against the others, especially if you move farther. Yeah, what about this line here? Just go diagonal. If I just move up and then target the ones in the diagonal line there. Yeah, I think that's the safest play. I guess that'll work. Yeah, I mean, if you think you're going to finish off the one next to Clapton with the first attack, then your second shot has a target. Well, I think I was most likely to kill the one that's to your left, but then, again, what do I do with my second shot? I don't have a clear shot. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly attacking me, so, like, worst case would be that it finally hits me and heals. But I, I, like, right. this, I like this plan of attack, Shaba. All right. Seems, seems good. Lock it in. Lock it and load it. So you move up and shoot in the small gap between Alindria and Clapton? Yep. Uh, that's a 22 to hit and 13 damage. All right. And then the second one is a 29 to hit, and that's for 12 damage. I rolled max on that. Are you, are you getting the extra damage from when you hit a wounded enemy? Yes, I can do that on one of my attacks per turn. Oh. The, uh, so I did that on the first one, then I rolled max on the second, so okay, pretty good. I don't need to announce your to hit. Oh, right. It's kind of moot, right? I don't think we can miss. Mm-hmm. All right, anything else? Uh, nope, that'll be it. Okay. As a- we think that a couple of the uses are near death, right? So I can probably just keep attacking. Can't you split your Eldritch? That is a great you can. question. Yeah, you can split. So you'd be mm-hmm. perfect for, like, finish the one that's almost dead and then finish the other one. I'm going to attack the one that's almost dead uh, in front of Captain Clapton. Because I know he's hurting. Um, so that's a 15 to hit. And max damage, 8 force damage. It's still up. Still, still up. wriggling right. around a little bit. Uh, plenty to hit. And 7 force damage. And that one brings it down. So All right. Phew. Slime stops moving, but there's still the two pieces that split off. <laughs> and um, that's it for me. One of the other pieces moves up and tries to attack Alindria this time. Ah, I will try to protect her with my reaction. Yeah, you throw your shield in the way and its pseudopod slams into your shield, but doesn't hit Alindria. Oh, Captain says, it doesn't look like I'm much help here right now. I'll leave this one to you guys. There's no shame in retreating, Clapton. We'll we'll get you in on the next round. Yep. He backs up along the wall a little ways, coughing and wheezing a bit, holding his sight. I toss Clapton my inhaler. <laughs> Lindria, she's going to go ahead and attack the one that attacked her. She causes it to divide again, but continues to do damage, because it looks like every time they split, they're getting smaller and smaller. 
Both of them are wiggling around the tokus. Three slimes left. All right. Those slimes are next to each other. So my green flame blade would actually work. I'm going to slash the one that's in front of Alendria because it has a buddy next to it. And I think since this is a spell, right, it's green flame blade. Well, green flame axe. I could use the bardic from Brian to enhance it, couldn't I? You could. It's a cantrip. I believe that's how that works. I believe so. I'm going to try to do that. All right, so I'll hit. Yeah, so that's going to like, that's going to give me more fire damage, right, of the green flame blade, essentially. Right, because it's, it's, I'm cantripping and like green flame blade mechanically adds fire damage to your strike. Like that's the magical component of the cantrip. Yeah, I guess. Okay. So I will add the Bardic from Brian into the Green Flame Blade. So that's going to be not so great. So that's seven fire plus the axe itself, which was five. And then the poison was one. (laughs) Oh, come on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And then I will fling the splash fire to the other ooze is seven. Plus my spell mod, which would be... That's enough to burn that one up. Okay. Sweet. There's just two little bits of slime still wriggling around. Squash them. Okay, Squish. I'll finish the one that's in front of Elendria, right? So now I get to follow up because of war magic with my normal attack. Uh, that is a one. I rolled a natural one. Nice. I do not hit. Womp, womp. All right. Should have been halfling. <laughs> I'm done. Come on, that's a cool way to use Brian's bardic. It is. I think that's the first time that anyone's done it in the whole podcast. I had no idea you could use bardics for damage. I would have been doing it all the time. Yeah, you you could heal up Clapton using the bardic and that kind of, that's like free. But it's only for spells, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, just spell spells. damage? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's okay, only, okay. yeah, only spells, exactly. Gotcha. You have some healing spells, so you can you can make use of it that way if you want to. It's true. Uh, one of them tries to attack Tokus again and misses. Shaba, can, can you clean up? I can certainly make an attempt. Do you need to move so you can... I think I'm good to shoot the one I'm shooting at right now. However, I rolled a natural one on that oh. attack. So my second attack will be a 15 to hit. And that's going to be 13 damage. It takes care of that one. So there's right. one remaining. We're just getting all the ones out of our system at the beginning of the fight. Yep. Aslo? Ooh, me again. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to launch some beams of crackling energy. That's a nine for the first one. And a three for the second one. For damage, that is. It has one hit point left, so Elindria <laughs> is going to run up and finish it off with her flaming sword. Step on it. Step on it. <laughs> She steps on it with her pinky toe. <laughs> and it dies. <laughs> All right. Phew. All right. So you've now got flaming zombie corpses and piles of goo all around you. Yummy. Yummy. I'll put the goo in one of my empty vials. <laughs> 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 of course you do. Ever the scientist. <laughs> How are you feeling, Clapton? Not so great. Seems like that one took a little bit more out of me than some of the others. X. It's fairly tempting to suggest your. How many more times can you do healing spirit, though? Uh, twice. I can keep on going. I mean, maybe it was a good thing that Captain sat out all those earlier battles. I mean, he's uh, in rough shape now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have two more spell slots left. They're both first level. Both first. Oh, okay. Is healing spirit. I thought healing spirit's a second level spell. Oh, is it? Oh, crap. You're right. It might be. Yep, it's second level. So yeah, you, you don't have a first a first level heal anyway, right? Mm, right, I do not. So yeah, you can't convert the bardic. It's all good. Yeah. Do we have a different way to... Do we have any healing potions we could use now on him? Don't have any healing potions. I've got one healing potion left, and I could uh, spend some slots to heal him up as well. I think, I think potions are where it's at, right? You think so? Yeah, I mean, unless... Unless we want somebody to be carrying a potion, but just, like, the action economy is pretty terrible. I feel like they're a good out-of-combat option. I would just let him swig it, because we're all, like, basically full HP-wise. Yeah. All right. I'll pass uh, Clapton my last healing potion. Clapton, take this. Drink it down. Let me know how many hit points you have left when you're done. (laughs) Thank you. That feels a little bit better, but not sure I'll how much longer I'll be able to fight alongside you. Perhaps it'll be best if you hold on 
to your own spells for yourselves. I'll do my part for as long as I can. Looks like you're going to have to tag team with Nibran. Captain, you have to go back to the ship. Tell Nibran it's, he's up and give him your weapon and send him down here. It's time for him to pr- really prove our, his friendship to us. Captain, really, it's okay. I, I, I've, got, I've got a few spell slots left. Why don't I heal you up just a little more? Maybe one more couldn't hurt. Any worse than this does. So I'll do a uh, second level cure wounds and roll 2d8. That is uh, 7 and a 2, so 9 plus uh, 6 is 15. That's so All right. All right. You heal him, but you notice the wounds that he took from the zombies are not completely closing up. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Sweet cripes. No. He's, he's looking better, but seems like your magic isn't affecting a couple of the wounds. Crap, dude. Maybe it did ability damage to him. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Uh, con or strength damage? Oh, if it, like, shrunk his con? I mean, yeah. that would be better than him being, like, infected and going to turn into a zombie ooze later on. Well, that could well, be the it case, could, too. It could be that, too. Yeah. <laughs> but he yeah. said he was feeling, t- like, tired and weak, so he might have lost con or strength, yeah. Come on. Let's pick up and keep on moving. All right. Yeah, but where to? This place is sprawling. Yeah, we've got three different uh, passages to explore here. Shaba, what about that little cove, though, you, or the little squeezeway you started to head down? What did you see? Why don't we squeeze on down the road and find out? <laughs> the heat and red glow intensify as you move deeper into the cave. Reddish-orange light reflects off of the volcanic rock walls and ceiling, just strong enough to make out the shape and size of the cavern. The floor you're standing on extends only about 25 feet into the cavern ahead and 30 feet to your left before ending in a sudden chasm. To the right, the platform runs farther along the wall but ultimately drops off. A large pillar rises from the pit near the center of the room, supporting the rough ceiling. A small ledge extends from the pillar close to the same height where you are now. Uh, On your left, two stone posts support a chain bridge which spans the 50-foot gap to the opposite side, barely visible in the darkness through the smoke and the wavy haze of the sweltering hot air. Smart to make it a metal bridge inside of a volcano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bridge? So is it a hanging bridge, but you said two posts support it? Yeah, it's like two stone posts that have chains at the top, and then those chains kind of extend across the other side, and more chains hang down supporting the floor of the bridge. Ah, uh, okay. So the posts are supporting, like, the railing of the bridge, and then the... Right. Okay, gotcha. Like, it's like a rope bridge, but chained right, instead of Right, but rope. made of stone, or made of metal. Okay. Okay, well, guys, what could possibly go wrong? I yep. st- crossed the bridge. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they put this bridge here for good reason, so I think yes. we cross it. <laughs> uh, I think we pause before we cross it and look around a little bit first and mm-hmm. make sure that it's safe. Let's observe a little bit. I've been playing D&D long enough to know that whenever there's a rope bridge, you, you got to make sure it's safe first. Are you saying you want to, like, clairvoyance across the chasm? Like, what, what, are you, what are you proposing? We can only see so far. Well, that's true. I've been playing D&D long enough to know that whenever there's a chasm, you should try not to fall into it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be bad if combat happened here, sure. I could put light on a coin and toss it across, or even, like, on an arrow and have Shaba shoot it across. Mm, yep, yep. Just to see what's on the other side. Let's do that. I, I, I cast light on one of Shaba's arrows. All right. That's a good plan. I'll fire it across. Uh, like, I'll, I'll go, like, I'll stand a little bit away from the end of the bridge and then just fire it, like, straight across the bridge. Everything above the pit is choked with this smoky mist, so it's hard to see through regardless. Um, everyone give me a perception check to see what you can spot. All right, perception. Ooh, that's a twenty. Natty Twenzo. Oh, wow. nice. Mine's a twenty non-natty. Mine's not worth mentioning. <laughs> well, Shaba and Aslo, you both spot as the arrow whizzes by. There's someone standing at the opposite edge. Mm. Of the bridge. <laughs> ah, yikes. It looks like he's right next to one of the posts, kind of halfway hiding behind it. Oh, he was waiting for us to walk on the bridge. What to me, I bet. these questions three. <laughs> what is your favorite color? 
Pink. No. Blue. Whoa. <laughs> An African swallow. <laughs> you have swallow. swallow. Well, I don't know I that I don't know one. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> with, by the way, with that natural 20, I would like to take this die now and put it on the other cool thing that Jay got me for Christmas <laughs> and put it on this little dice throne. Yes. Uh, and give it the crown that comes with it as well <laughs> for, for being such a good die. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to post a picture of that on the Discord as well. A die of royal lineage, surely. That's right. <laughs> did, you, did you get that screenshot? I was trying to take it when Brian held it up. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm not going across that bridge with what you guys saw. Yeah, now that the light's past him and the smoke is filling in the gaps, you can't really see if he's still there or what what he's doing now. But it looked like he was sitting, you know, looking down the bridge, waiting for something. As well. Oh, man. Uh, give me another l- uh, light spell on this arrow. Okay. Sure thing. I will summon the lightning of the Ram Lord and um, <laughs> fire straight down the bridge. <laughs> Hoping that nice. he hasn't moved yet? I mean... I don't see why he would have. Or maybe I'll just fire the light arrow straight at where he was. Yeah, yeah, don't don't waste a charge All right. of the bow, but... I'll fire an arrow where I saw him standing. Shooting into concealment. Disadvantage? Yeah, disadvantage, and he has to still be in that spot. We shouldn't, like, okay. wait to make sure he's not, like, a merchant trying to sell us stuff, right? <laughs> Get these supplies before you meet the final boss. He just <laughs> opens his coat and he's just got healing <laughs> potions and stuff hanging down. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Take this. Um, that's a 12 to hit Womp Womp. Would have been a 21, but the disadvantage. Or it would have just been a 12. It doesn't hit, and you can see it looks like he's started to... Well, he wasn't exactly where he was before. It looks like he he saw the arrow fly by, and he's decided to start moving. Mm. So he's mm. you're not sure where he's headed, but he's farther back from the bridge okay. compared to where he was before. I was going to make a suggestion, but it was a little too late because I was looking at the wording. Your hunter's mark might have been really helpful here, uh, Shaba. Um, it would give, have given you advantage on any wisdom perception or wisdom survival checks to find this guy. But I can't see him is the problem. I, I, I know, I know, I know. We only got a glimpse of him. Yeah. If it was a reaction that I could cast it as, then that would work. Yeah. I mean, if he's moving, if he's moving away from the bridge, I feel like the bridge is safe to cross. Except for the, like the button on the wall on the other side of the no, bridge no. that you press. <laughs> he's he's running he's running to tell his buddies that the party has arrived. Quick mm. after him. Yeah, we should we actually should run after him so that we don't get bottlenecked. Yeah, we really should, should. We literally make a break. Yeah. Alright, let's go. We do it. Quick. We run. Now's not the time to think, now's the time to do. We don't want to make the bridge jostle too much. Maybe one at a time. Uh that's okay. It's metal. The slats on the bridge are actually stone. Mm. Oh, wow. Thin stone slats held up by chains. Yikes, man. But when you're running out over the pit, her whole body is just scalded from the steam. Ooh. And you're having trouble breathing, and your eyes are watering as the particles fill up. Yeah. I know they say don't look down, but what happens if I look down? (laughs) Have you ever seen that scene at the end of the one uh, Indiana Jones movie? (laughs) Yeah. You can make out the glowing red lava slowly shifting and swirling uh, about 80 feet below you. Oof. And the heat from it is just feels like it's melting your face. Ugh. Does the lava look like it's flowing like a river or like it's just like a pool, like swirling pool? It's just a roiling mass of it. Ooh. Yikes. All right, let's get across this bridge post haste. Come on, guys. All right, we run. Yep, let's go. Oh, this is horrible. You weren't kidding. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Can we like hold our breath? Does that do anything? I would hold your eyebrows if I were you. <laughs> Holding your breath, I mean, it helps, but it still is, you know, getting in your eyes and your nose and everything. Tokus, did your wig take any damage? <laughs> huh, huh. Tokus reaches for his wig. Is it still on? Uh, it looks like it. Hold on. Let me. It got, it got a little jostled in the in the run. Let me straighten it out for you. And I straighten it out and like I take out a comb and I comb it for you. Oh, thanks, Shaba. Do you have time for this right now? <laughs> I do the little thing where I like spit on my finger. No, cl- we definitely don't. But this no, is, we don't do this right yes, now. But we this do it. It's anyway. all just theater of the mind. <laughs> but we do it anyway, right? <laughs> After him. By the time you make it across the bridge, you, it looks like the cultist has reached a small tunnel 
that has been carved into the rock wall at the far end. And he's starting to run down it. Go after him. Let's give chase. It's going to be like Han Solo with the stormtroopers. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Can we can we see him? Can we do anything? You could try to shoot from here. Um, I, I mean, I, I hate to spend my final spell slot, but maybe it's worth it. We don't, Brian, you're out of Ralehim psychic glances, right? Uh, no. No, I'm not. I mean, I'll take a shot. If I can shoot, I'll shoot. Well, I'm definitely not out of Eldritch Blasts, I'll tell you that much. Shaba is able to shoot still, and his is you know, resource-free. Yeah, but would it actually stop this guy? I mean, you never know till you try. Okay, go for, go for a shot, yeah. Do I have disadvantage this time? Uh, yes, because he's in the darkness. Okay. All right, that should still do it. 24 to hit. Hits. You got a 24 to hit with disadvantage. Heck yeah, I rolled a 14 and 19. Uh-huh. Um, no, that dies. Cocked. Uh, that's six damage. Assuming that's the first damage that he's taken. Yeah. Your shoulder strikes him. Or your shoulder. Your arrow My strikes him in the strikes shoulder. strikes him in the arrow. <laughs> right in the arrow. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> just below the shoulder in this shoulder blade and he lurches forward staggering away it looks like it, that was a pretty serious blow to him oh okay oh take that can I take an Eldritch Blast shot you can also with disadvantage alright let's try here stop right, thief 20. <laughs> that man stole my arrow come back here <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay that's a uh, 13 to hit with disadvantage. 13 hits. All right, so that's two, and then two damage, and then the other bolt is 18 to hit and five force damage. Nice. These don't get enhanced by your spell mod, do they, the damage? Not the damage, no. So between the two of you, you've managed to take him down just as he was entering the first few steps into the tunnel. (laughs) Just as he was about to press the button (laughs) that says, in case of emergency, press this button. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, I was going to maybe cast a new spell, but you killed him too quickly. Uh, Sorry, Tokus. Uh, Sorry about that. We're just too good. (laughs) <laughs> it's okay. I, I'll forgive you. Sorry for being better than you. <laughs> it's a story of my life lately. <laughs> so I assume you, you recast light on yourself so that you have a source of light around you? Yes, I do. We inspect the body. Okay, he looks like a normal cultist. He's, he has the, the beaked mask, which you haven't seen in a while. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Probably good for down here. Otherwise, you don't notice anything unusual about him. Doesn't have, like, any keys on him or any... No. Nothing. I give him a good jostling. I just shake him just to make sure he's good and dead. Um, I take his beak mask and I add it to my cultist outfit. <laughs> ah, there you mm. go. Nice. nice. Okay. Very good. It's a good touch. You could even wear it to help uh, against the fumes down here. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I take his cultist robe off and drape it around Captain Clapton's shoulders. The whole point of those masks is kind of to help against the bad air, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's filtration. Yeah, actually, I, I will wear it because of said reasons. Um, this might be metagaming a little bit here, but uh, Thane mentioned that there's like an, a rocky outcropping that sticks out from the pillar in the center of the room, um, and I can't help but wonder if there's a reason for that uh, outcropping. Is that worth investigating? Yes, it is. With these kinds of things, there's usually like a pile of treasure on it or something. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so let's walk over to where the chasm is. Um, Give me another light spell on an arrow. Okay, check. And I'll fire the arrow out onto that platform or like try to hit the wall low over top of it. And then I'll take out my spyglass and look at it real close. (laughs) You're going to ruin the lens on your glass with all of these bits of ash floating through the air? No, you shoot an arrow across. You don't see anything. It looks like it's just a natural ledge that formed there. It doesn't look as clear as the ground that you're on right now. Like, it's a little bit rocky. So maybe, you know, they cleared off this area, but not over there. Hmm. I mean, tactically speaking, that would be sweet to teleport to and then just start casting spells from. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. That'd be fresh. All right, well... Down the tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we pursue. Like, he was he was running to tell somebody. Yeah, the room full of cultists at the end of this hallway is surely where he was bound. <laughs> well, you walk down this short tunnel, which ends in an elaborate stone door. 
Carved to feature a variety of imperial icons and imagery. The door is 12 feet tall and 5 feet wide, making for an imposing barrier. Whoa. As you draw nearer to the door, you feel an intense magical pressure emanating from beyond. Mm. Causing you to shiver involuntarily despite the heat. <laughs> it's chilling. 